Okay, this a short video that I've made to help other folks out. Here's my beloved Denon AVC A1SE uh, surround sound amplifier. It's been working beautifully for years and then all of a sudden I was listening to it and uh, I heard a crackling noise from one of the rear channels and then the sound stopped completely. The amplifier turned off and the uh, red power indicator on the front here started flashing. If you recycle the power to the unit, the main display comes up for a few seconds, seems to go through some uh, internal self-checks and then switches off and again the LED starts flashing. So anyway, what I've done is I've managed to get hold of the service manual, download that online for free, and taking the lid off um, and having a look inside, you can see that uh, it's a fairly complex design. Here's the service manual, move that out of the way. So the, the top um, panel comes off the case and that gives you access to, to pretty much everything you need. So you can see in the middle you've got the mains transformer, the two reservoir capacitors for the main power amp supplies. Um, I think there's a, a power supply board down the front with some heat sinking. And then you've got the main amplifiers for the, for the right channels and for the left channels with their associated heat sinks. I think all the DSP stages are underneath and uh, obviously you've got various other little PCBs around to do the back panel connectors, the speaker terminals have their own little PCB inside. Um, there's obviously one behind the front panel to do all the controls um, but normally these types of faults are in the power amp stages. So anyway, what I've done is I've accessed the side, I've removed the, the side panel here and uh, I've accessed the uh, PCB which has got the main uh, power amplifiers on it. You can see the power transistors along the bottom here for the different channels and it's my experience that in, in power amplifiers the heat from, from the output transistors propagates up the PCB and the heating and cooling effect causes the solder joints to fail particularly where it's a single sided PCB like this. It's, it's, um, it's a pretty poor quality PCB you can see all the uh, other connections are made via links rather than tracks on the top side. The holes are not plated through, so this is not a very good uh, PCB, so you will have problems with it from time to time. Um, before you get started, the first thing you, you need to do is you need to uh, get your voltmeter out and uh, you need to make measurement of the reservoir capacitors. So the main supply is coming along these three terminals here on the end. I've unscrewed the, the lugs and put them out of the way for the minute. The ones on the other end for the other power amps are, are still in place. If you measure uh, between those pins uh, it will tell you what voltage you've got on these two rather large capacitors because you definitely do not want to short them out. Uh, the charge held in those capacitors is quite high uh, and uh, there'll be a big bang and a flash and uh, it may do some damage to the terminals or even the capacitors. So what I would recommend is if you measure across those and you've got any kind of voltage you need to discharge them. Now um, I, all I did was use a couple of resistors. I used a higher value to, to discharge it down to a lower uh, voltage and then I used a, a lower value and I just clipped my meter leads like that measuring the voltage on the meter and shorting it across the terminals. Um, I think the lowest value I did was, was 100 ohms and uh, the higher value was a couple of K. This will discharge the capacitors right down so if you do have an accident when you take the terminals off and they short out you shouldn't do too much damage. Right so once you've done that you can then start disconnecting things. The looms on the top here that plug into this little uh, right angle PCB along the top uh, you just unplug those. I've undone the uh, supplies as I said on the end. Uh, undone the screws for the transistors there's um, some other devices which also mount onto the heatsink and some, some thermal sensors under here which have screws in as well. So I've disconnected all of those. There, there's a handful of screws I think in the corners of the PCB, one in the middle and a couple at the bottom that hold the PCB in place. You'll need to unscrew those to get the board out. I didn't bother undoing the terminals on this end because you can effectively hinge the board around and I'm always in favour of disturbing as little as possible. Now, what you're looking for is dry joints. Um, if you've seen them before, you'll know exactly what to look for and it won't take you too long, but I can probably save you some bother. 
the ones you're probably going to find a problem with are these large black transistors. I think they're TO126 package. And if you put your finger on them like this, you can wobble them and look at the joints from the other side. So let's have a look, see if we can see on this one. No, that one looks okay. Wobble that one. Well, there you go. If you look at the left hand end, you can see the pin is uh, is really going for it there and that's because the solder joint is broken so that one's going to need resoldering so what I would suggest if one is gone I would go along and and resolder them all you're really looking for the for the larger components uh, any components that get warm you may see slight discoloring on the PCB you see there in the center it's slightly darker so that shows there's some heat being generated there so these are sort of telltale signs of areas you need to look at and again that looks slightly discoloured there. So I shall be going over those joints and uh, re-soldering them. Now if you found bad joints on the left channel board the chances are the right channel board is uh, going the same way. So whilst you've uh, got the amplifier in this state um, I would do exactly the same on the other side to, to what's being done on this side and uh, re-solder those joints. Put it all back together, make sure you've um, marked which supply wires have come off which point. I mean here, here they are, I've taped them up to stop them shorting just in case there's any residual charge left in the capacitors. You definitely don't want to connect them up uh, the wrong way around, that would, uh, would spell disaster. So be very careful with that, if in doubt make some notes before you take them off um, and uh, write, write down the colours. I think it was uh, red at the top, blue in the middle and uh, black at the bottom okay now once you've done all that reassemble it carefully i've used this opportunity to vacuum out any dust that's accumulated inside and uh, and then i would uh, would try powering it up and see if your uh, flashing red fault led on the front has gone out and it and it functions normally there's quite a lot of self-check circuitry inside this amplifier so if it self-checks okay the chances are it's all right if you want to be sure, you can always take your voltmeter and measure voltage across the speaker terminals. Make sure you've got no DC offset. Switch it to AC and with no signal going in, you shouldn't have anything coming out. And then at least you know you're not going to damage your loudspeakers. If you wanted to, to be um, super cautious uh, or just prudent maybe, um, you could measure the output transistors. So before you power it up, this is, in fact, whilst it's in this state, I'll probably do this anyway, it's measure across the terminals. You should have fairly high resistances across all of these. Uh, if you see anything low, anything measuring low, then unfortunately one of your, your previous bad joints has probably caused one of your output uh, transistors to go. And you will need to replace that. Uh, experience tells me that if one of your output transistors is gone, you've almost certainly blown some other components up um, prior to that. It's not a complex circuit, there's some emitter resistors, there's some pre-drive transistors. Um, the rest of the circuitry is pretty much monitoring, so uh, I doubt that that's uh, been damaged. So you need to check back through, check your semiconductors, measure your resistors, replace any components that are, are faulty, and go from there. Uh, when you first power it up, you can make measurements uh, for DC offset and, uh, and AC signal. Don't forget these are relay isolated, so it doesn't actually link through to the speaker terminals until the amplifier thinks everything is okay. And I think if it doesn't like what it sees, it will, it will power itself down to protect everything. So what you'll probably have to do is to make measurements in the circuit, perhaps on, on the leads to the transistor or any relevant test points on the board. Um, in the few seconds it's doing its self-tests before it switches off and that will let you know uh, whether you've got a DC offset still or whether you've got some kind of fault in that stage. Anyway, I hope this video has proved useful. These are, these are very valuable amplifiers even now. I mean they're about £4,000 when they were new. I think even now they're probably about four, three to 400 so they're definitely worth repairing. It's, uh, it's an awesome machine. So hopefully this will help you out if you have the uh, flashing red LED of doom. Good luck.